Hello. Hello everyone, if you are here, say hello in the comment box and let me know. I don't know if my thing is just being really slow. Oh, there we go. Hi, Jen. Okay, right. I'm guessing that it's working. Oh, yeah, it's caught up with itself now. Hello, everyone. Okay, so, hi, I'm Katie. You might know me already, but for those of you that are just tuning in, I've been doing, hey, Troy, I've been doing um, a series of lives on choreography. Um, so the past couple of ones I taught an actual sequence, but today I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to talk to you guys instead. I'm really short-sighted, I don't know why I'm sitting so far away. Oh hi. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to sit and talk to you guys instead today. And I'm going to go through some choreo tips and tricks. So for those of you that um, aren't performers or art choreographers, um, I hope that you find this interesting as well. I uh, hope that you've also been enjoying our other lives. Uh, we had Jasmine yesterday, she was doing some wig care, which was really helpful because um, <laughs> my wigs are in a giant need of a new life. We also had Shireen doing some baking, got some lovely things, and all of our donations uh, are going to black organisations. So all of our donations that you sent to our Buy Me A Coffee page, for which we're very grateful, all the ones backdated have been sent now to black organisations and all the ones going forward from all of our lives will also be donated because we feel like this is the important thing to focus on at the minute. Anyway, so, oh, I think that the link will be put into the chat somewhere. For our, so it links to our Buy Me A Coffee page and then when we collate enough um, donations, we then send them on. So I hope that somebody's going to do that. Oh, is that it? Yeah, thanks very much. So, and also if you go on to our Facebook page, you can see which charities we've chosen to donate to. Um, I think it's four that we're splitting them in between, just in case you wanted to know. Um, and I would really recommend going and have a look at them because they do some great work. So, on with the live. So, we are going to talk about, yeah, about choreography. Because fire choreography is a really weird thing. Um, and it's especially difficult for people that I think don't have a uh, don't have a basis of understanding how to choreograph already because people are mistaken in when they think that because they aren't naturally good at choreography it's not something that they can learn that is not true um, and I promise you it's not true there are tangible things that you can do to improve your ability to choreograph so I split them into practical things that will actually get you going with your specific moves and then kind of more vague pointers on things to have like think things to have wafting about in your brain as you're doing it. So they're, they're a mix of practical and kind of like general tips. And I thought that it would be easiest for us to go from the beginning to the end of the process rather than me just like saying random things at you that you're probably not going to retain. It's easiest if we think about it from beginning to end. Uh, let me just catch up. Oh, hey, Lucy, how are you? Okay, great. So, here we go. Um, so, when you're choreographing, the first thing that you're going to do, more than likely, is to find your song. This is like a whole other thing in itself, so I don't really want to get too much onto that. Um, I think if any of us have ever really had that experience of trying to find the perfect song, you know that you can spend, I have lost days doing it, like 12 hours a day, that was my work for the day, just sifting through Spotify, SoundCloud, editing things on GarageBand, or you know, sending, talking to other producers to try and get it edited in the way that I want. Finding the music is a nightmare. But let's just say, for the sake of the argument, that you have found your music. The first thing that you, uh, I think is really important to note about the music that you choose, regardless of genre, is that you need to pick a song that has peaks and troughs. 
By this I mean that you, it's really helpful to have parts of the song that are like perhaps a lot louder or a lot faster and then you have contrasting parts of the song which are a lot quieter or slower or that give you some kind of um, contrast to the other part of the song. Um, this can be like for example with a rock and roll song it's really obvious because you might have like a really big chorus with loads and loads of cymbals and then you might have a much quieter verse. In an R&B song it's a, a little less obvious because you tend to have melodies and vocals doing a similar thing throughout the whole way through. Sorry I live right next to a train track by the way if you can hear that. <laughs> I, so that might be going on. it's like a central London train station so you're probably going to get distracted by that um uh anyway so yeah and the same in if you're picking like a drum and bass or a house song then it can be a bit a little less obvious but there will be peaks and troughs there i would steer clear from songs that don't have peaks and troughs because number one it's going to make it really hard for you to choreograph if you've ever choreographed anything you might pick a song that's four minutes and it seems like nothing and then when you're doing it that four minutes all of a sudden just stretches out for a lifetime <laughs> you might have spent like i don't know half an hour doing a bit of choreography that lasts about 20 seconds so if you pick a song that's too similar the whole way through that is just going to emotionally weigh you down and you're just going to feel that music stretching off into the, the distance whereas if you have a song that has clear peaks and troughs, you know that you've got a definitive end of that section to work towards. And it actually makes you more engaged, it makes your brain like work harder because you have a deadline. We all know that we all work best when we've got a deadline, right? So if you have a song with peaks and troughs, it's kind of doing that for you. Um, and the other thing about having <laughs> I'm so forgetful, so I have to have notes. Um, I think the other thing about, oh, the other thing about having peaks and troughs is that it's going to keep your audience more engaged because it doesn't matter how much you love a song or how great you think a song is, there's pretty much always going to be somebody out there that doesn't really like it. So if you have a song that's doing quite a lot, then it's keeping your audience focused, engaged without you really having to do anything. You don't want your audience to go into a trance, basically. Um, for those of you that might have seen anything by Set to Soleil, let me know if you have seen anything by Set to Soleil. They are absolutely amazing, and what they do is incredible, but very often their music choices are like, kind of like weird, hypnotic, sort of like instrumentals with like strange vocals and it kind of like lulls you into a trance and then before you know it you might have spent like five minutes cross-eyed like not really concentrating on any of the amazing things that they're doing because it's kind of weird and fantastical so I kind of, it's my personal preference to steer clear away from that because you want your audience to be like engaged with what you're doing <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing that uh, Song of Peaks and Troughs does. The also uh, final note on music before I move on is that pick a song that sounds good loud. That sounds really dumb and obvious, but there are some songs, like if you're going for a more sort of um, lyrical sort of vibe, that there are songs that just don't translate well, they don't have enough layers in them. Um, they don't translate well to a big, like a big venue. So a good way to do this is to list, always listen to your songs on headphones. Very often, like phone speakers or laptop speakers aren't, well, they're just not good, are they? So you're not going to get the same effect. If you have a great sound system at home, then listen to it on that, obviously. But you know, for most of us that have housemates, we can't really do things like that. So listen to your music on headphones, so you really get an accurate representation of what that song is going to sound like in a big space. All right, so now that I've talked your ear off about music, <laughs> we're going to actually crack on with some helpful tips. So when you first start listening to your song, you need to listen to it actively. What this means, it sounds obvious, but again, it's one of those things that we slip into about realising. When you are listening to a song over and over again, you can very much get like lost in it and not lose your focus and 
you know, not really pick up on anything that you would have might have, might not have done the first time. When you listen to it actively, listen to each individual layer of the music. Force yourself to listen to the bass. Then the next time, force yourself to listen to the melody. Then the next time, force yourself to listen only to the accents. The accents are the bits that you might just have like an odd little cymbal or an odd little like synth sound or perhaps the singer does something interesting with the vocal that isn't you know for the norm throughout the rest of the track. These are the bits that if you pick them out, just like a couple of them throughout the track, then and you choreograph something to that accent, that's what's going to make it look really professional without you even really without the audience even realizing what they're looking at. Because naturally, like everybody associate like combines the visual and the song without even realizing it. So when those things when those two things are really together, it's gonna give your performance an extra bit of depth. So even if it's just something as simple as a head or moving your fingers or maybe if it's a big a big drop you can you might be doing like for example like a windmill you can drop into the windmill there listen for those accents because they are really going to help you um so that's one so that's like an actual practical thing that you can do other practical things are using different levels so very often we, because we perform in a certain way that's natural to us, you can get stuck doing that. So that kind of means that even if you're performing to a different song, you're kind of essentially doing the same things, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it means that you have a style. But if you get too stuck in your own style, it means that everything that you do looks the same. A really easy way to combat this, and again, it's like a practical thing that you can force yourself to do when you're choreographing. Um, an easy thing to do is to incorporate, force yourself to incorporate different levels or different facings. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the traffic is so loud. <laughs> Sorry if that's getting in the way. Um, so you can uh, incorporate different levels or different facings. So that means that instead of, I don't know if you can actually be able to see me if I stand up, Let's just, for the sake of argument, let's say that you're doing everything stood up. Force yourself to do something on the floor because visually, it's like the it's a visual representation of the peaks and troughs that you have in the music. It's like a visual thing that you can change. Now, force yourself to do say eight counts on the floor. Another thing to do is to change your facing. So, if you're doing everything really face on, challenge yourself to do something to the diagonal and then choreograph a transition to the other diagonal before you transition to the front. If you start forcing yourself to do these things, even if it's just for, just to kind of like research and find out what you can do, you're gonna then naturally start implementing that into your choreography later on. That kind of leads me on to um, recording yourself. It's really, this is a really useful tool. So if you take anything away from today, take this one. If you record yourself just freestyling or doing anything to your chosen track, because chances are you might come up with something really great and then have absolutely no, it was, no idea what it was that you did. We've all done this, this happens to me all the time. And I guess the reason why I'm telling you to do it is because I get really annoyed at myself for not doing it. <laughs> so if you record yourself freestyling, then you can watch it back and you've got an you've got evidence of the things that you did that you, that worked so you're never going to lose that that's a pro tip always record yourself freestyling to your song um okay so more useful practical things um record yourself doing it oh yeah so another really useful thing that you can um, force yourself to do is if you're getting into a rut and say for example you know that you've got 30 seconds to fill before you've got a big section choreographed to the chorus already. So you know that you might be finishing 
in a certain position, say you're, say you're doing some fans and they're open and they're in front of you, you know that you've finished there. And the beginning, the, the beginning of the chorus section that you've got, you know that you've got to be there to start it. So you know that you've got to get from there to there. You can set yourself little tasks. So to divide up, say, that 30 seconds, you can say, okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna use 10 seconds to get to on the floor with my arms crossed. And then if you set yourself another 10 seconds, say, I'm gonna use 10 seconds to get up and then face the back, and I'm gonna have my fans behind me like this. And then you can get another 10 seconds, and you know that you're gonna be there for the chorus. So that way you've set yourself little markers, and it's an experiment to see if you can do that. So where were we? We were here. So if you know that you've got 10 seconds to get to the floor with the arms crossed, you know that you can go maybe up, round, out, and come in, go down to the floor, and go down again. And then you can probably fill up 10 seconds doing that. You can do it again by going to the back. And so when you work out a way to get to each bit, there's going to be a lot of that stuff that you don't like, but naturally, without even thinking about it, will have already choreographed 30 seconds and there's going to be say half of it that's good and you can just do that again set yourself an, a little task a challenge to work to each of those markers and you're slowly going to fill it with stuff that's actually good like content that's good um, and that you can apply that to a lot of different parts of um, when you're trying to come up with a choreography before you even start if you want to do like a research and sort of like uh, research and development, little like uh, practical activity, you can basically set yourself. That's not annoying. <laughs> so much car alarm is going on. Sorry, this is what happens when you live in central London. You can use little markers like that to be able to get through. I'm going to sit here so that I can see you all. So, oh, hey. I've been choreographing my fashion. Oh yeah, honestly, it's such a good tip. So I have, because I used to get, it's so frustrating, isn't it? When you get stuck in something and you can't get out of it. And even if you like force yourself to go and have a break and go away and come back, sometimes you will still get stuck in that bit and it's the most frustrating thing ever. So yeah, if you force yourself to do that, it's really helpful. You can also, force yourself to do the same thing with different levels and different facings. So you can force yourself to use a marker and say that you're going to get from there to there and you're going to get from up to down. It's, I learned that from, um, from a, like a contemporary dance work, workshop and it was such a useful piece of information that I was like, oh my god, I can apply this to fire. Um, okay, so, oh, another practical tip for being able to fill a choreography hole is that remember you have other parts of your body. This sounds, again, really obvious, but you forget because when you're, like, when you're doing fire, you're thinking only about your prop and you're thinking about what you're doing with your hands with that prop. You'll very quickly find, or now that I've mentioned that you'll quickly notice that you spend so much of your time worrying about your hands that you forget about all the other parts of your body and you've got you know you've got feet use them you've got a head use them you have hips use them you don't necessarily have to be doing things with your fans the whole time um, you can like say you know if you're doing like a more sexy dance you can incorporate some sort of like belly dancing moves or hip rolls if you're doing something that a little bit more alternative you can incorporate footwork and have stamp, and you can go from use your feet to go forward to side to back. It sounds again, it sounds really obvious, but I think we get so um, caught up in what we're doing with our fire that we totally forget that there are other bits of us that have use. <laughs> your head is such a <laughs> is such a useful tool. <laughs> Heads are useful, aren't they? Nice bit of wise information, um, but. Your, your face and your head is a really great way to change focus. And something as simple as a head tilt, which can fill, which can theoretically fill like four to eight counts. So, you know, there's less choreography to fill. Um, 
is a really easy way to fill that and then also add some kind of depth, add focus. Um, so yeah, that was using the using your body and also setting yourself markers. There, you can kind of combine them if you want, but they are really useful to get yourself out of a choreography hole. Um, yeah, I've got a note here. If you find yourself really stuck, you can pick a bit of your body and force yourself to choreograph something about that part of your body. So you can focus on your hips. You can say, I'm going to spend 20 seconds doing a bit of choreography that focuses on my hips. I'm going to spend 20 seconds doing a bit of choreography that focuses on my feet. And again, you're going to build up content, some of which is useful, some of which isn't, but you're going to have it there for a later date. So, what else do we have? Right, so I think um, that's kind of all the practical things. And now I'm going to talk about more sort of like creative things, just like little pointers to have in your head whilst you're doing them. And yeah, that's all the practical things. So, um, general kind of like performance tips which is going to help your choreography. The first one is use your focus. This is the most common thing that I see people forgetting about. By that I mean that you should always be thinking about where your focus is. Because where your focus is, is where the audience's focus is. You can see like, you, you see it very often happen with flow style performers. They're amazing at what they're doing. Well, you know, the flow is something that I think there's loads of flow artists that are really incredible. Being able to freestyle effortlessly is a huge skill. But if you notice, very often flow is flow is such a, like an, an intimate thing with yourself that people very often get lost in what they're doing. Um, obviously, you're having to concentrate so much on what you're doing, which is you know a hard thing, but. It means that, so, that, like with the Cirque du Soleil thing that I was talking about, it can become a bit hypnotic. And so therefore people, the audience actually seem to, you know, kind of can turn off a little bit, which is unfortunate because a lot of the stuff that they're doing is amazing um, and perhaps, you know, more technically skilled than other types of performance. But if you want the audience to appreciate what you're doing and appreciate all the skill that you're putting into your performance, if your focus is really centralized, then you're gonna lose all that good stuff. So, you know, say for example, if you're in a really um, technical combination with a staff and you're doing lots of like spins and stuff that you're really concentrating on, you need to have moments of pushing that focus away from what you're doing in your hand and out towards the audience because that's when the audience are gonna connect with you and they're actually gonna have to, have to take that moment to be like, wow, what that person's doing is amazing. So really try to push your focus always out to the audience. You can focus, sorry, you can push your focus towards you. So as in, you can make the audience look at you. If you're, say for example, connecting with somebody with your eyes, you're forcing them to look at you. You can also use your focus to force them to look at, say, your hands for the fire. If you're doing like a lovely bit of eating solo, you can force your audience to look at the fire by you looking at the fire. And then you can bring your focus back up, they connect back with you again, and then you can do a trick. So you've connected your audience to the fire, to you, and then that makes sense for you to then go into a trick. Um, it's something that I think really makes your, elevates your performance to be um, like a little bit, have more depth, and you can also <laughs> waste time doing it, <laughs> which is something that we always want to be able to do when we're choreographing. We want to be able to waste some time and not have to panic and try and fill every count. Filling every count is something that I think a lot of dancers in particular do. Dancers don't like, dancers aren't being, com dancers aren't comfortable enough with just being and doing. That's something that I think is, um, that perhaps, I don't, I don't want to say untrained because it sounds like I'm using it in like a condescending way. I'm not at all. 
I think that actually people that tend to not be so stuck in traditional training, they do this really well. They can really, um, they are not afraid to take the time away from the prop. They're not afraid to fill up that time with just being. So I think a lot of dancers or more trained performers can really take note of that. They tend to get like a little bit lost in what they're doing and trying to frantically overcomplicate everything. So yeah, focus. Your focus is the most important thing. You don't want anything of the amazing stuff that you're doing to get lost. And okay, so tying into that is kind of like a similar thing. It's like allowing yourself time to connect with the audience. Um, Give yourself actual space. So when you first come on, if you're saying like in your entrance, give yourself 10 seconds to connect with the audience or give yourself 20 seconds to connect with the audience. Actually a lot that time um, to do that. And you can do that again. You can check in back with the audience, say halfway through or if there's like a lovely you know, bridge or something where, you know, um, the, perhaps the song gets lower. Um, you can actually allot that time to check back in with your audience. Use your face. This is a huge one. I think a lot of people forget that um, it kind of ties in with the focus thing, that you have face, you use it, use different expressions. You don't necessarily have to be doing like plasticy faces. Anybody that uh, knows me, uh, my performance style, knows that I get really carried away and you will see a lot of pictures of me like this. <laughs> like the happiest girl in the world or <laughs> all the photos that we <laughs> we get some really funny photos back <laughs> I would say that we'll share them with you all one day but I don't think that anybody would be happy about it when you have like really game face photos where you're doing like this ugly thing they are hilarious in a photo but it means like that you've been doing a good performance <laughs> It means that you've actually been uh, having a good time with what you're doing and putting some character into it. So we kind of say, like, if you've got a nice photo, then you're not doing, <laughs> then you're probably not doing a good performance. I mean, that's a generalisation, but use your face because um, if anything, you're going to get a good picture out of it. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Another, oh, kind of like less practical thing, but just a kind of thing to think about is um, learn other people's choreography. I don't know, I hate saying that. Um, because I know a lot of people really do not like learning choreography. But this is invaluable to you because what it's going to do is it's going to help you learn your language. I think the thing that people forget is that dance is a language and choreography is just the sentence structure of the language. So every people think that like, you know, you can't learn choreography, you can't learn to dance when if you haven't done that from when you're young, but it's just simply not true. It's like you can learn uh, it's harder, it is, as we all know, but you can learn a foreign language as an adult. Dance is exactly the same thing. Choreography is just a means of connecting the words, the steps, together. And the more you watch other people's choreography, the more that you learn other people's choreography, the more language you are going to soak in. So you can watch, I would really recommend watching like maybe some folk dance and watching contemporary dance that's meshed with, uh, that's where it's influenced by folk dance, or you can take other people's like choreography lessons, like fire choreography, you can learn things from people on YouTube, but the more that you soak in and try and replicate what they're doing, not to steal it obviously, but just to learn it, the more language you're going to be learning. People that um, hate learning choreography, myself included, so like some days I do not want to learn choreography at all, it's just the last thing I want to do, but the more that you do it, the more you're going to find that you actually have more steps, like more steps to say. I think we can get very limited when we just do things that come naturally to us. We feel like we don't have, um, we don't have a varied vocabulary, but if you're watching other people, other people's choreography, you're going to get a more varied vocabulary. 
So set yourself a little challenge. Pick yourself, pick something on YouTube and learn, say, 30 seconds of it. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then maybe a week later, you can learn another 30 seconds of something else. And eventually, over time, you're going to be able to use those steps to create something yourself. Right, okay, so I think that might be all my points. You know, it'd be really helpful if I wrote things down in an ordered way, but I don't. <laughs> because I am the least organised person ever. Um, yeah, okay, so and that's basically all my tips. So, I just as I said, it was just going to be a short and sweet one. Oh, sorry. What do you do when you're firing a mic? Oh my god, this has happened so many times. Yeah. Oh yeah, I look really angry when I'm concentrating too. I get this. Oh my god, I've got so many pic I've so many pictures of myself like this. <laughs> yeah, it's not hot. Um, what do I do when the fire won't light? Yes, that is a, that's happened to me so many times. I know it's like every fire performance worst nightmare, isn't it? When you're like all your lighters breaking, or like there's wind and you, there's a breeze and it's just the thing going out. It's the worst thing ever. Pro tip: always have a spare lighter. Always have at least a lighter in your bra. Haley is like a lighter queen and she always has a lighter in her bra and she has a lighter like attached to her. She has a blowtorch one. Definitely get a jet lighter. They're the ones that um, you, they, they often look like little like army grenades or you can get like little pistol ones or you can get, um, you can get ones that are like the chef's lighters but <laughs> I don't think they look cool <laughs> on stage. I have guilty though. I have used one of those on stage. <laughs> um, but get a jet lighter and put multiple ones on your person because I've been caught short and I've actually, there's been times when I have been caught short and I have had to get off stage and get like a stage manager to give me a lighter. That's happened. I hope that that's happened to somebody else too because it is really embarrassing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that that is everything. Hannah, please do not share this. I don't know why I said it. Don't share all the bad faces. Oh my god, there are some really hilarious ones of me and Charlotte though. Once we did a gig together and every single picture that came back was the ugliest picture that you've ever seen of either of us. So we do have those in the archive. And I'm pretty sure there's some really funny ones from, um, I wasn't on that job, but the one that Jazz and Kat and I think it was from uni. You did like a festive show at a uni and the pictures from that are hilarious. But yeah, okay, so that's everything today. As I said, it's just going to be quite short and sweet. Um, and I think next time I might do how to pick up choreography because, as I said before, it's something that you can actually get better at. There are specific tips, uh, tips and tricks that you can do to be better. It's not just something that you're na naturally good at and not. You do have to work at it, but it is something that you can do. Um, so I think when I come back next time, I'm going to do that, or I might do how to do group choreography. If anybody has a preference, then please let me know. So I could either do how to pick up or how to do group choreography. It was lovely to see you too. So if you have any donations, please send them to our Buy Me A Coffee page, and then we will send them on to a variety of, I think it's four different organisations and charities. Um, Thank you very much for tuning in. I think that we might have, I could be wrong, but we might have Kayla tomorrow doing yoga. I hope that I've got that right. <laughs> uh, if I haven't, sorry Kayla, you're doing yoga now. <laughs> okay, so I am going to say goodbye. I'm going to be on the Instagram, so please DM me if you have any questions. Oh, sorry Jackie. Um, I will, it's in group. Do a kickflip. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it took someone so long to say that actually. That's really funny. Do what you say? You want group choreo. Okay, cool. I can say I can um, plan out how to group choreo. Bring my Bobby, Jackie. Yes, it is recorded. So um it's like I think how long have I been on? I've been on for half an hour now. I'm gonna post it to the page now. So you can watch it. But thank you very much. 
for staying in my mind with me. I don't know why I just sang that actually, but um, I think I've had a coffee and not enough sweets today. <laughs> anyway, bye everyone. Have a wonderful Saturday. Lots of love.